All right, uh, we are out here, I guess. So what we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna be having a bracket of Melee computers that play um, on behalf of these players in the tournament. So our first round is gonna be GE.V100 versus Jinzo and Tonic. Uh, and I guess just to clarify, um, everyone who entered the last giveaway but didn't uh, win, basically, so not Jinzo and Tonic, uh, I put them in the second round at least to give them a little bit better chance of winning. So yeah, uh, Jinzo and Tonic versus GE.V100. Uh, so we will be picking Samus, I guess, for Jinzo and Tonic, kind of like Jinzo. Um, and then I have no idea what to pick for the other player, so I guess we will pick Pikachu. And yeah, let's watch them. Uh, we'll pick a small map. We'll pick Yoshi's. Um, this is 20XX, so that's why they're moving like this. Jinzo and Tonic with the first stock. GEV.100. We'll just call him 100. Uh, fighting for it, though, for sure. Some nice tilts out of Jinzo and Tonic. Going for the grab with Samus, very questionable. Gets punished with that uh, good old Pikachu up smash. Or up smash, my B. Jinzo and Tonic going deep for the spike, misses it, but uh, 100 dies anyway. A quick game so far. Around half over. Ooh, the unfortunate up B in the wrong direction by Jinzo and Tonic. Uh, 100 looking to capitalize on it, closing that gap. Ooh, some nice, uh, nice normals out of the Samus player. Going for some bomb shenanigans. Uh, Jinzo and Tonic looking in pretty clear control, but I say that and then 100 gets the F smash off stage at least, but can't follow it up. Samus obviously being a pretty difficult character to kill. But that up smash, as uh, 100 demonstrated earlier, is not anything to scoff at. There it is again. One hundred tanking pretty high percent on Yoshi's, and then another unfortunate up B from Jinzo and Tonic's Samus. This is best of one, so we've got a. <laughs> A down throw into a couple nares, some nice normals, Jinzo and Tonic playing safe now on stage. Ooh, an unsafe grab, but gets it anyway. Does get a follow up as well. Ooh. Ooh, goes for a grab. They're both nervous at the end. Jinzo and Tonic clutching it out and making it to the second round. I am gonna go grab some water real quick. I didn't know then my voice was going to be, I don't know, basically I want some water, is what I'm saying. Uh, so yeah, we've got Jinzo and Tonic versus uh, Izanagi Yu-Gi-Oh next. So yeah, one sec. All right, we're back. Uh, I guess we're gonna have, uh, I guess we should probably honestly do uh, winners or whatever, basically keep going with the first round, which is all that I think is showing to you all anyway. So we'll go with uh, Elmer Catalan versus Pot of Weed Original. So Elmer, 
sound like a Mario player, my guy. So uh, go ahead and select Mario. Uh, and then Pot of Weed, that's clearly a Captain Falcon main. So uh, we'll get the, the green skin, hopefully, on the Falcon. Yep, there we go. All right, Falcon versus Mario. Um, we'll go ahead and do Battlefield. Hopefully the computer can handle it. Some nice movement out of both players right out of the gate. Bold fair uh, right in Pot of Weed's face from Elmer. Sticking pretty close to the ledge here. Ooh, oh yeah, Pot of Weed going deep but making it back. Mario doesn't, I guess Cape, honestly. I was gonna say Mario doesn't really have anything to deal with that, but yeah, Cape deals with that super easily and well. Elmer doing a good job of walling this falcon out. Ooh. Any sort of combos from a Mario? Honestly, Mario can definitely combo, but this is not conventional combos, so they look even kind of cooler. Elmer taking the first stock. Pot of Weed, unfortunate SD right there. Not looking good for Pot of Weed. SD from Elmer as well. That's the problem with these 20XX computers. They do SD a lot. Yeah, but they play pretty fancy and close to the edge, so... It's definitely hype. Pot of weed getting a grab. Not getting anything off of it, though. Ooh, Elmer catching him with the up tilt, but uh, not really getting anything off of it. Yeah, it looks like a stock. Elmer making uh, easy work of Pot of Weed right now. Ooh, going deep for no reason, though. I think uh, Elmer's SD'd both of their stocks, so Pot of Weed not looking too good. But I, as I say that, putting some damage on at least. We see the first cape from Elmer, I think we've seen all game. But yeah, going for that Mario short arms grab. All right, um, Elmer hopefully looking to close it out pretty soon. Definitely a longer game than the last one. Pot of Weed looking for the edge guard here. Make or break. Pot of Weed is struggling to connect any aerial other than like stomp and nair. It's part of their problem. Elmer, yeah, I was gonna say, nice dunk for the GG. I was gonna say, I don't think Elmer's nervous at all. Um, but yeah. Elmer Catalan moving to next round. So we got Yugi Poke cards versus Dirk Hans or Dirk Jans, I'm not sure. Uh, Dirk Jans, I don't know. Uh, yeah, so Yugi Poke cards, we will make that a Jigglypuff right there. With the bow. Uh, Dirk Hans, that sounds like, I don't know, a, uh, a chic player maybe. Nah, we'll give them uh, Ice Climbers. All right, so uh, we'll go ahead and send him, send him to Dreamland. All right, the last match of the first round of our single elimination tournament. Uh, I haven't said this yet, but the whoever gets first will win whichever of the two cards they choose, and then whoever gets second will win whichever card the winner doesn't pick, basically. Uh, yeah, I haven't even commentated anything yet, but looks like, yeah, some rests, putting in work, putting in ridiculous work. Uh, Yugi Poke cards right here. I don't know if Dirk Hans is going to be able to, uh, yeah, get a wobble going here or not. Apparently not even able to punish a sleeping Jigglypuff, but um, 
does connect to down smash at least. Some nice movement out of the Ice Climbers player at least, but looking pretty decisive for the puff already one minute into it. Yeah, that's looking like the good game WP. Nana not even doing anything. Alright, we have a grab. We have some some blizzard grab stuff. SD from Nana. Yeah, it looks like 20XX Ice Climbers was not a good choice. Um, I'm sorry to Dirk Hans, but this is more fun than literally spinning a wheel, so <laughs> it's, it's pretty much still random anyway. Will we see a four stock, though, out of uh, Yugi Poke cards? Or will this Sopo from Dirk Hans or Dirk Hans clutch it out? Ooh, yeah, reverse back air from the Sopo. Getting on the board. But Yugi Poke cards, pretty, pretty definitive leader still here. But yeah, it looks like uh, the Sopo is putting in more work than the double the both climbers, basically. Yugi Poke Card's struggling to get kills with anything that's not rest, though. Um, if, yeah. <laughs> but that's fine if you're gonna just run in raw rest, that's fine. Uh, almost a four stock. Yugi Poke Card's putting in a ton of work, making it to the next round. All right, so uh, Izanagi Yu-Gi-Oh versus Jinzo and Tonic. That sounds like a Marth player versus uh, our Samus hero once again. Oops. Sure, that's a Black Marth. Why not? Let's go. Uh, we'll go to random, and it is Yoshi's, which definitely favors Marth. I would say, but Samus a tanky champ for sure. That was a Odd combo, odd string there, all four moves, but we're seeing Jinzo and Tonic putting in work right out of the gate. That sword overpowered, cutting right through the missile. Alright, raw F smash at 43 after the hit. As I said, stage kind of favors Marth. It's ridiculous uh, out of Izanagi Yu-Gi-Oh. Jinzo and Tonic definitely trying to answer this though with some elaborate uh, Samus combos. Could have held ledge there, I think maybe. I'm not sure. Or could have maybe rolled. I don't know though. Um, but yeah, Jinzo and Tonic finding the answer. Some weird edge cancel stuff on Randall with the side B there. Izanagi Yu-Gi-Oh trying to put Jinzo and Tonic off stage. Jab, jab, dare attempt. Jinzo and Tonic trying to close the gap, almost there. Yep. Jinzo and Tonic takes the lead and it results in a, a stock. So now the true lead. No jump, though, on this. Ooh, that would have been, yeah, that, that was the F smash right there. That would have not even been a degenerate one. Punishing the landing is just uh, good. See the neutral B. Izanagi Yu-Gi-Oh looking to close this out with um, no damage, which they're so far doing well. All right, there's the raw F smash. There was tons of opportunities for the F smash, but we were not seeing it. So yeah, this is a back and forth one right here. It'd be fun if Melee had like amiibos basically, like you could train computers to do things. Like look at that. Down air onto Randall for no reason, into bomb, into late nair, into down smash, into maybe charge shot right here. See, Izanagi Yugi already dying, but I think maybe Jinzo and Tonic would have followed up with that charge shot onto Randall or something ridiculous. Ooh. Complete sour spot on that F smash, but we are out here. Getting down to the wire. Possible F smash range now. 
Yeah, it's gonna have to maybe be a tipper though, if it's gonna be cross map. Ooh, there was the raw smash right there, but Jinzo and Tonic tacking on the percent. It's gonna make it more difficult for Izanagi Yu-Gi-Oh to clutch it out, even after that uh, random F Smash Beyblade letter rip does finally connect. We see a back throw, F Smash attempt. This nair could be it. Early up B. Jinzo and Tonic gives him ledge though. Ooh, yeah, early up B again. That was a close one. That was uh, one of our closer sets. Jinzo and Tonic out here looking like potential winner once again. Might have to lower Jinzo and Tonic's level on the computer after this. Yeah, I'm gonna have to nerf this man. Uh, but yeah, we've got. Ooh, I gotta update the place in bracket on the stream. There we go. There we are. Uh, yeah, so basically we're on this round now. Alright, um, so we've got Hong Chang 32 versus Everclear 1102. These are two new players, I mean, basically people that are entrants in the second round of the giveaway. So thank you for your entries. Uh, I have no idea who to pick for you. Um, Everclear, that sounds like a Ganondorf player, someone who doesn't care at all <laughs> about things. Uh, so that'll be the Samus, becomes Ganon. Uh, the other dude, why not uh, DK? DK versus Ganon. So Hong, you're DK. Everclear, you're Ganon. Let us go. Um, put him on a small map. And have at it. Sounds a little bit laggy. Uh, we are only getting 50 frames per second for some reason, but we're out here. Yeah, this is pretty bad, but uh, yeah. A little bit better when I minimize OBS and stuff. I realized that might have been the difference. That quadruple roll, making me proud as a Ganon main. Back hitbox of the Nair, <laughs> goes for the side B. Um, I'm sorry I'm forgetting the players' names, but uh, I'll have to go look. Hong with the first kill, and then Everclear answering it. Hong definitely seeming to have the momentum, both on this stock and in the game in general. These call-outs with that triple nair. Getting called out three times with a DK nair in a row, that hurts. But getting too fancy with a bad character also hurts. So, uh, Everclear looking to potentially cheese it out with this lead right here. Oh, goes for the... <laughs> gets the up tilt off on shield, basically. I want to see a side B, maybe, into a finisher, or I mean a side B into a combo out of Everclear, or maybe just a, a raw F smash out of the uh, the DK player, Hong. Alright, Everclear looking like the potential winner right here. High percent though, so yeah, if this can result in an edge guard, then then maybe, but if <laughs> triple up B is not a great way to start your last stock, basically. Alright, goes for the forward throw <laughs> and gets the kill with it. Yeah, Hong started out with the momentum early, but Everclear has definitely pulled away. Just had to get comfortable. Yeah, dash attack, anything? No? 
Any sort of edge guard, yeah. It's starting to get to the point where, yeah, stuff like Nair will kill. All right, so Everclear taking that one. We'll go on to face Jinzo and Tonic in the next round. Come on. All right. And we will nerf Jinzo and Tonic a little bit after this. <laughs> um, Yu-Gi-Oh! Collector 94 versus Elmer. The homie Elmer playing Mario. Uh, versus Yu-Gi-Oh! Collector 94. Sounds like a Link main, if I've ever uh, seen one. Oops. Alright, there we go. Um, I don't know what map to put him on. Well, let's just go to random, I guess. It's gonna maybe get fancy, but FD! Mario vs. Link, Final Destination in the year 2021. The Exodia slash Mirror Force hype. Yeah, that's a late fare from uh, our hero of time there, but some rolls and such. Double dash attack. Yu-Gi-Oh! Collector trying to make it work. Getting a lot of grabs, to be honest, for a Link player. Tech chase into, into down air. Oh, the dunk from... From Elmer, but accidental SD. I was gonna say Elmer seems to be in control, honestly. Possibly possibly the better player, but it's about that scoreboard. And right now Yu-Gi-Oh! Collector 94 has more stocks, as indicated by the heads above the percent on the heads up display. Elmer needs an edge guard there, and it doesn't get it. Resetting neutral, and then yeah, that's a nice combo there. Bread and butter out of Yu-Gi-Oh! Collector 94. Looking like that SD killed all momentum for Elmer. Yep, alright. That that was a quick one. I'm sorry, Elmer, about uh, that second, about that game right there. But Yu-Gi-Oh! Collector 94 possibly seeded second for a reason. Putting in a ton of work. Alright, so we've got Bethany Super Spooky Fun Time versus Yugi Poke Cards. Um, so Yugi Poke Cards, I believe, was the Jigglypuff. Um, so I guess it should be Mario though, just because the bottom player. This is hilarious. Alright, so there is uh, Yugi Poke Cards. And for Bethany, super spooky fun time. I'm trying to decide whether Falco or Sheik is the appropriate choice, but I think Falco. And yeah, random map. I do not know if the computer can handle Fountain of Dreams while streaming, but we'll see. Only dropping a few frames there, it seems. Yugi Poke cards. Uh, not immediately resting Bethany. Like they did to uh, the other player, the Dirk, I believe, was his name. Or their name. Bethany putting in a decent amount of work, uh, winning so far. And, but uh, we're looking for a down tilt, maybe? Yep, there. Fishing for that down tilt. That shine makes it all the more any down tilt will kill, probably. Even a bear at this point. Bear, that raw F smash, anything. Even an up tilt, maybe. Not Nair, though. <laughs> I would say not Nair. Random dare, that's that. Alright, I'm just winning stuff. Ooh, going too deep. Ooh, oh, I'm surprised that that made it back. But um, we are out here. Only punishing with Nair, and then rolls back, and uh, Yugi Poke Cards is like, we rest those. Um... Bethany looking for the dunk there, but uh, Puff just going too high in the air. Seeing some up tilts. This is a more hype one for sure. Falco Puff. 
Um, a more even matchup than people traditionally have given it credit for. There's the bear we could have seen last stock to end it earlier versus something like Nair. Bethany pulling ahead. Uh, Yugi poke cards is one rest away from having a tie, though, of course, at any given moment. Not seeing many bears uh, out of Yugi poke cards. <laughs> Double spot dodge. Ooh, the reverse laser. Is this? Yeah, I was going to say, I think that now, yeah, I could judge better that she's going to make it back from that. But still just scary to see Falco go off stage like that and be below the map. Ooh, yeah, that dunk. Looks like Bethany is going to take this one pretty easily. But Yugi Poke cards. If they get one edge guard into a couple rests, because it looks like Bethany's not going to necessarily punish the rest super hard. Down smash, better than Nair at least. Jumping off stage and scaring me again. Yugi Poke Card's trying to up tilt for that intercept. It's looking like most aerials at this point will do it. A couple more Nairs. Even a shine from up top will do it at this point. Yeah, up air off the top. Uh, Bethany definitively taking it over um, Yugi Poke cards right there. So, moving on to fight Yu Gi Oh! Collector 94 in the next round. Alright, so we are going to nerf Jinzo and Tonic a little bit just because he won last time. And then we're going to have Jinzo and Tonic versus Everclear. So, Jinzo and Tonic. We're gonna lower them to, or him to, level 7, I guess. Oops. And then, uh, I guess we'll put Everclear still level 9. Let's go. Um, we'll do random. Hopefully it's not um, Yoshi's for the Samus player's sake. Or, my bad, hold on. Wrong color. <laughs> This is Jinzo and Tonic's Samus color, but we'll still go back to Battlefield. There we go. Some nice bears. Jinzo and Tonic showing that he is willing to use that speed that Samus has over Ganon right out of the gate. Ah, too deep? Oh, I'm surprised. That was a very nice reversal on the up B in order to make it back. Jinzo and Tonic with the forward aerial. Or I'm sorry, uh, Everclear with the forward air, calling out the tournament winner from Jinzo and Tonic. Raw F smash though. Nice, ooh, we do not like to see that, but I'm just getting scared by the stuff that these computers can do. I guess that that's fine, and they're making it back. Dunk from Jinzo and Tonic, tying it back up after quite a bit of momentum. Weird up throw into aerial side B from Everclear, but um, currently is winning, so can't knock it all that much. Jinzo and Tonic with the up B out of shield. We like to see stuff like that, but we don't like to see the shield getting that small. And we don't like seeing rolling with Samus towards the edge of the stage, either. Everclear punishing that pretty hard. Some nice tilts to fight her way, or his way, out of the corner. His way in the sense of Jinzo and Tonic, her way in the sense of Samus. Shout out to everything Jinzo and Tonic does for the community. Um... Even if he does end up making it to the finals again and winning more cards, it's not that bad of a thing. He deserves that and more, honestly. Have to open some Rage of Raw or something and pull some Jinzos just in his honor sometime. But yeah, Everclear. Got that full stock lead right now. Jinzo and Tonic looking, you know, obviously to even it up the potential nerf looking too hard I'm not sure but honestly the movement from Jinzo and Tonic is looking like either player could have won this match for sure 
despite the stock deficit right now. Currently he's putting in work, so for all we know, it'll be tied one to one in a sec. All right, there's the stomp, commentator's curse pretty much. That was a nice late nair to up B for no reason. You get ideas from computers. Look at that. There's like a pivot wave dash pivot jab. I don't even know when the pivot took place, before or after. Like, Jensen and Tonic looking like probably not going to clutch this out because Ganondorf's too overpowered. All right. Uh, Everclear making it to the finals. So congratulations, Everclear. You've won at least a prize. You'll have to see whether you get to choose first or you'll have to choose between or basically you'll have to choose you don't get a choice <laughs> we'll see based on that or based on the winners of the next round let me update the stream again to pull the bracket over so yeah we've got bethany super spooky fun time versus Yu-Gi-Oh collector 94 uh for a chance to win a prize essentially All right, so Falco with this jacket on versus Link, default. All right, let's see where random takes us. Pokemon Stadium with the transformations on. This is the closest to that authentic melee or whatever. A lot of shielding from Bethany so far. Uh, that's a tiny shield, but baiting Link into the grab is all right. Uh, Close, close match though so far. A lot of percent really quick. Low back airs from uh, Yu-Gi-Oh Collector 94 in a good way. The power shield. Okay, yeah, uh, Bethany with the F smash. Obviously one of Falco's best moves. Closing out the stock. Yu-Gi-Oh! Collector 94 trying to get these uh, down airs as an interrupt or a retaliation or whatever, and it's not working out too slow of a move. <laughs> Grabs Link out of the up B animation and throws him down. Yu-Gi-Oh! Collector 94, that was pretty nice. If that would have killed, that would have been cool, basically. That slide off into down air. Um, obviously not great in a tournament setting with a prize on the line, but uh, yeah. The computer's getting super confused by the tree right now, so that's obviously kind of funny looking. Yu-Gi-Oh! Collector 94 making it onto the board with that nair. Bethany up being straight at him, though. And comboing off it. Yep, this is looking uh, like a wrap right here. Is this closer to the four stock or a four stock than uh, Yugi Poke Collector's Jigglypuff earlier or not? Who knows? Who knows by the end? If she doesn't get touched again, okay. At this point, it's pretty much no. It's just not. But a, obviously, a very dominant performance from Bethany. Super spooky fun time versus uh, this Link player, Yu-Gi-Oh Collector ninety four. So congratulations to Bethany for also making it into the finals. We'll see. Who gets to choose first, basically? This one's for all the marbles, or at least the most shiny and important marble. So, yeah, Falco versus Ganon. A classic matchup, in my life at least. And we'll give him the random. Give him the chance of getting FD or Pokemon. Instant stomp from the Ganon player. Calling out the approach. Bethany firing some attack moves very quickly, though. Uh, and Ganon being large. <laughs> Up beef, low key for the style. Accidental roll backwards. But uh, yeah, Everclear hasn't touched her in a long time. And those low computer Falco situations. Ganon obviously benefiting from Dreamland right now, tanking a little bit more. 
but he needs to connect some moves. <laughs> Shino stalling, goes for the up B out of shield, and it's just not looking great for Everclear. Everclear playing more safe, I would say, this stock, but we do not like to see that, but I guess Bethany giving him ledge, probably accidentally. Or out of compassion. Who knows? Scary seeing them both close to this ledge right here, actually. The interrupt. Um, that up air, but doesn't get anything off of it. Dash attack underrated, especially against... Uh, I mean, I was going to say against fast characters, but honestly against Falco, dash attack's underrated for sure. Because it's a move that you can throw out after a laser or something. Uh, Bethany obviously looking pretty dominant in this one again. I don't remember how the first match went that she played in, but... Or was represented by Falco in, you know? But um, we are out here. Looking like the potential four stock for real. Everclear needs to get a stock. Going for these up Bs. We need to see... A bear, maybe a forward ferial, even a tilt at this point. Not probably an up B that's not going to kill. Bethany looking for the four stock, destroying this uh, computer Ganondorf. Down tilt combos into fair and stuff between like 80 and 100, but not this late. Ooh, that could have been at least the scoreboard... Stomp right there, but Bethany looking for the four stock. Is Falco too busted? Everclear looking for taking a stock. Is actually Loki ridiculously hype. <laughs> okay, Everclear with the back throw potentially taking the stock. Nope, Falco magnet hands. And the down air. All right, Bethany super spooky fun time takes the tournament with the four stock in grand finals. Uh, I will have to consult them on Instagram to see which of the prizes that they would like to choose. And then, still, a large shout-out to Everclear102, or 1102, my bad, 1102. Um, you also are going to be getting whatever prize Bethany Super Spooky Fun Time does not choose. So congratulations to both of you. Um, thank you, everyone, for watching the the VOD if you did. I know I didn't have a ton of viewers, but I'm trying to speak as though people are watching anyway. So yeah, that's the end of the tournament. Uh, we'll throw up the standings now. I'm gonna go play in a melee tournament soon. So, yeah. Bethany Super Spooky Fun Time with the triple win. Um, undefeated. And then we've got Everclear. Two wins. Jinzo and Tonic also with two wins. Unfortunately, not in the proper rounds. Um, that, that goes back to the fact that we did throw Jinzo and Tonic in round one, basically, because of winning last time. But we were seeing a run out of Jinzo and Tonic this time as well. Uh, yeah, thank you all for subscribing. Um, thank you all for following me. Thank you all for entering the giveaway, basically. I appreciate the support. That's why I decided that we definitely had to do, basically, another round of the giveaway. So yeah, that is the stream. Thank you for watching, and I'm going to play some Super Smash Bros. Melee for the Nintendo GameCube. And I just realized that you can't actually see what I'm showing you on the... Uh, I mean, I guess you can see the wins, but you can't see who it was. There we go. Proof. Yeah, once again, thank you.